Oh, there's a reason why I wear a hat. Um, uh, it's because I run, right? M most of my hats are reflective because uh, these are running hats. So uh, they're not like the, they're not made of cotton. You know how uh, baseball caps, right? <laughs> they, they tend to be made of cotton. These are made of polyester, so they're like, they're paper thin. Uh, I wear hats for very... There's a very... Secret. This is a secret, alright? Just between you and me, Alex. And also, hello, Alex. The secret is... From time to time, I, I don't usually uh, habitually wash my hair with shampoo and condition. Uh, typically, I rinse every once in a while. And then, uh, when I shampoo and condition, I have very, uh, the Asian hair where it always points out and it kind of looks like a fro when it's drying up. So, after I, like, towel up, uh, the days when I, you know, wash off all the protective oils in my hair, it just, like, frizzes out. So, I wear a hat for about an hour or two, which typically is when I stream, right? And then I take it off. And then you, uh, the hair will relax and it will look like what I usually look like. So generally speaking, it's just reducing the amount of need to maintain my hair and as it's growing and whatnot. And then when summer roll, when spring rolls around, I shave it all off anyways. And then I wear the hat more. I wear the hat more consistently. Uh, during the win during the winter time, my hair gets pretty long, actually. Sometimes it becomes like a mall in the back. But... So you'll know the days that I'm using the hat to keep my hair down. Yeah, it's just a story. Instead of, you know, wearing hair products or all that other stuff. Or having bedhead. Bedhead's a thing. <laughs> Yeah, very nice reflective hat. The brim is reflective because it's for running. You don't want to, you don't want cars to miss you, you know. How are you do, doing today, Alex? We're at the tail end of our thing. We got in some good little smooth, smooth maintenance going on today. What are you up to today? Or what were you up to today? Doing well. Just got home from the gym. Uh, what day is it today? 
Uh, you mentioned chest, back, arms, and legs. What's today? Although, low key, low key, Alex, never, never skip leg day. Every day is a leg day. Come on, bruh. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. That, that's my best impression. That was an attempt, <laughs> an attempt to be like a, be a memer. Like every day is leg day, Alex. You never skip leg day. It's every single day. Arms and abs. All right. Some core, core and arms. Not bad. I never skip leg day. It's overweighted people. It's favorite day. Fair enough. Remember, I, I know you probably heard this somewhere quite, quite some time. Uh, remember that the actual act of here's, here's something that's a little bit interesting. I think, uh, it's a perspective shift that I don't think has gotten enough representation. So the act of exercise is not generally the thing that's responsible for weight loss. Like the, the literal calories that you burn in exercise as a fractional diminished return on losing weight. However, when you participate in establishing working out, right? That is the mindset and the habit that enables one to approach different parts of their lives, like their diet, which is substantially where the caloric deficit, uh, caloric deficit is achieved. However, it's worth noting that it's just because, you know, like conventional knowledge, a lot of times people objectify, try to use metrics to rationalize which one's more important, your diet or your exercise. Well, typically the answer is both. However, I want to do one better than that. The idea is it's not literally that you are burning calories in the gym. It's the idea that when someone is overweight or someone wants to shed some weight, they're in a routine, right? And that routine is getting in the way of establishing new habits. And oftentimes, what comes out of being able to routinely establish a new habit of exercising isn't the literal calories you are burning. It's the mindset that you have what it takes to establish a new habit. And because you can do that with exercising, naturally, you will also pair it up with the use and regular consistent application of dieting. So when someone picks up an app for like a diet, for example, you have, uh, that becomes easier and lower barrier intuitively because you've already gone through the ropes of establishing an exercise regimen. So from a psychological standpoint, um, coupling these work not because exercising literally burns calories or the app literally rem like cause like tracking calories literally tell you when the deficit is it's that psychologically you have established new things and you can establish and use new things consistently that breaks the tedium and breaks the complacency that you have that has kept you at your weight, right? So I could even argue that if I, if you can get someone to do a new hobby and then ask them, hey, you know, do you want to change up your diet a little bit? They are likely psychologically more open to doing new things when there's another new thing that they are willing to do already. So oftentimes it's not emphasized enough that why do people are, why are people encouraged to pick up a calorie def, like a calorie tracker and at the same time become more active. So it's not one or the other. Oftentimes one or the other in isolation does not work most of the time. 
Like you heard this time and time again in the internet culture. Which one is better, right? Oh, hey guys, it's not about exercise. You you have to work really, really hard to burn out those calories. It's about your diet. Focus on your diet. Well, the answer is both. It's to get into a psychological mindset that you can do new things. And those new things can be relevant to one goal. So oftentimes now you see the integration of them. So people who have an active lifestyle, what they talk about is they talk about both. Try to stay active and also occasionally, you know, redefine your diet. It makes both of them easier as you do both, right? So that's kind of one of the biggest, to me, obviously, I'm all about habit formation and habit management. So from a psychological standpoint, I'm really happy to hear that you're doing two tasks at once and you already establish that your working out thing is already unconditional. So you're coupling that. Have I read the book Atomic Habits? I have listened to some of Atomic Habits. It's actually uh, in my uh, Audible. Yes. And just as a just as a fun coincidence or disclaimer or something, is the things I say are very similar to a lot of other like self-help books. It's generally not because all the different people have coincidentally know each other's work, but these things are very universal. Like the, the idea of establishing habits, dropping habits, uh, combining positive habits with a negative habit that you want to establish into a, um, like a positive habit, or using, like, if you want to establish a habit that helps you out, but it's very stressful, you attach it to a habit that is incredibly less stressful and provide extra energy. There's, like, substitution, displacement of habits. Those things are traditionally accepted in pretty much the different contextual habit books, like self-help books. So Atomic Habits would be one of them. I only heard some of the stuff in Atomic Habits only recently, maybe like a week ago, because another influencer who I'm familiar with mentioned Atomic Habits. And then that influencer also came up with coincidentally the same premise, premises and like axioms and methods that I have. So uh, overall, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a coincidence. It is a coincidence, technically, but generally speaking, we all have our, we all, the people who are focused on these things, tend to come around to very similar core, core principles, and they contextualize it with their own experiences. So I use, obviously, different whatever co context that I would prefer, and then I imagine... You know, now that you mention it, I should really finish listening to the book. I listen to audibles. So when I'm writing and doing stuff, I uh, listen to audiobooks. It's been a while since I dug into my audibles. Like, uh, I, in a very left field thing, I have a lot of self-interest books too. Like, uh, not, not like self, but hobby stuff like the Witcher series, Lord of Rings, and all that just sitting there to to be revisited atomic habits is happens to be one of them there's another interesting book that comes from an influencer uh the person that i have a very strong parasocial relationship with and that's uh john green and john green wrote a book called the anthropocene review and is if you like the nature of the things that I talk about, like just take something and then just kind of talk about it in a very individualistic or personalized way. John Green's uh, book, uh, Anthropocene Review, uh, anth the Anthropocene. Oh, John Green, uh, Fault in Our Stars is probably the most popular one because it had a movie made out made after it he also did turtles all the way down 
which I think is getting a movie adaptation now. But Faults in Our Star is probably the one that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, because it was incredibly popular. And I recently listened to his book, Faults in Our Star. And it is, obviously, it's a very mature topic, right? About coming to terms with terminal illness, right? And, and it uh, goes... It comes th through the lens of youth. And sure enough, just, I don't know if you know, but his brother is Hank Green. And Hank Green recently fought lymphoma. He's in remission now. So it's a very, like, when we think about Fault in Our Stars, it's a very real thing. Now, like, John's, John's brother, Hank, he had cancer. But he's doing well now. And Hank is the other guy that I usually... Re He's the information guy. The one that you'll see passionately discussing, like, you know, perspectives on scientific knowledge. SciShow is how I came across Hank Green. And then because Hank Green is very close with John Green, his brother, uh, I then have formed this parasocial relationship with them because uh they really remind me of my best friends actually it's kind of eerie how my best friends look and act like them and i look and act like my best friends so uh, i would not be surprised if you start watching their stuff they have like a it's called vlogs vlog brothers and they talk about these things all the time, just randomly things. They're a lot more concise than me. I think they're far more comfortable in talking about things at short length. I'm, I, on the other hand, haven't really refined the ability and the professionalism. Like, I'm not a very concise person. And the platform that I use usually favors being concise and short. And... Hank and John are very good at that. They're very excellent at that. So what takes me like an hour <laughs> to preface and takes them like two or three minutes. And it's not to say that they haven't been long-winded. They've been doing this way longer than I have. Uh, they are also, I think both of them are at least, I think they're over seven to 10 years older than I am. So they're like technically one intellectual generation away from me. So it's kind of wonderful. They're one of the few that I think that I extract uh, more experience from. Like they're actually my seniority, like they're my senior. So I really respect the wisdom that they uh, distribute freely. Obviously, I don't know them personally. It would be, I don't even know what I would say to them. I'd probably just shake their hand and sit there and say, tell me something interesting. That's how I really approach most things. Um, I generally open my mouth and offer things and uh, when I see an opportunity to be encouraging. However, when I, it's non-solicited, I rarely ever volunteer. So if I ever meet one of them, I probably shake their hand and just thank them. And play a chicken game on who would voluntarily share a fun fact first. Because uh, my bet, my willingness to, uh, my bet is that I would say if I theoretically sat in the room with John, John probably say something that then starts the whole conversation in like a six or seven hour podcast or something, right? Yeah, John Green and Hank Green probably, and uh, Atomic Habits come up a lot. The author, like it's the, I would say right now, Atomic Habits would be the trendiest uh, revision of the things I'm talking about, about habit formation and psychology. Although all the stuff that's in those books are coincidental, but also very understanding. Like if I were to read through the book, I imagine a lot of the stuff, it will 
vindicate, I mean, vilify a lot of the stuff that I've been presenting. Yeah, haven't finished. Here's, here's one thing, Alex. So Atomic Habits, I don't know if you're thinking about it as a negative or positive or to-do thing, but one thing I uh, love to encourage people to think about is that uh, if you're ever in the mentality, like you're really focused on the mentality of completing things, right? I, I love completing things. I'm a completionist when it comes to video games, right? I pick a task, I want to complete it. But here's another thing. Oftentimes, when someone, I'm not saying you feel this way or not, uh, it's hard to know. Uh, but a behavior that I see a lot of times are people who, when they play a lot of video games, right? It's about completion, uh, about completing a task to gain closure. Well, sometimes you don't, you know, you just fall out of interest or something, or sometimes something comes up. But instead of having it feel like a, ah, uh, yeah, I didn't get to finish it. Like I should really finish it. Finish it when you want to. Because if you didn't finish something, it didn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing, right? I'm not saying you think it's a negative thing, but a lot of times people think it's a negative thing. And the only thought to my mind is, what made you more, in what more interesting thing came up, right? And then, you know, it could go south and say like, well, you know, uh, my life kind of, spiral down it's like it looks like it's more important like it looks like yes your life uh something terrible happened in your life but that's more important right you don't have to view the thing you dropped and left incomplete when naturally you have left it for something more interesting so that's just say like a reframing of certain things and i have left things unfinished on occasion, and even those things don't have to be negative. Silence, fictitious. <laughs> so when you leave something, um, sometimes uh, people can get into a mindset, a reinforced mindset that uh, they must finish things. And uh, this is just a digression. I'm not implying you have these. Uh, a lot of times you can hear people say like, ah, you know, the first time I tried this, uh, I kind of got bored halfway. Like, well, it sounds like you found something more interesting to occupy your time. Instead of, yeah, I'm never coming back to it. It's like, it's boring. If I start another one, it's probably going to be boring. So a lot of times when I think about uh, people mentioning finishing things, I often think like, why, why did you stop? Which is the question that I'm going to ask now. Uh, why, why have you stopped uh, finishing Atomic Habits? I can explain my end. So I listen to a couple of chapters. I typically listen to audiobooks when I drive somewhere. So whenever I go on a road trip, or like I go to the anime convention once a year, I would listen to two or three audiobooks by the time I return. However, it's been a while since I took a road trip, so I don't naturally listen to audiobooks when I have things to write and other things to do if I'm from my desktop. So the Atomic Habits thing, I was sampling Atomic Habits on that road trip. And I actually listened to mo most of Faults in Our Star, coincidentally, uh, while I was listening to a couple chapters of Atomic Hearts. So I just didn't get back to that. That's pragmatically speaking. However, what is keeping me from going back to Atomic Hearts, a uh, habit, I keep saying hearts, sorry. I'm thinking of a video game, sorry. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with video game. I think it's called Atomic Hearts, right? <laughs> I'm, I meant Atomic Habits. Uh, the Russian like alt history first person shooter uh, power game. I'm pretty sure it's called Atomic Hearts. So my bad. I meant Atomic Habits. 
Um, and yeah, I haven't gone back because I feel like I probably know enough about it. And there are quite a lot of other things going on right now. Yeah, it's the one with uh, robot girls. And it's like in a alt history Russian uh, dystopian setting. Wasn't feeling it, I guess. It's just not that entertaining. I see. Have you, uh, have you, oh, it's just heart. Okay. So no, no S. Okay. Uh, have you listened to audiobooks at all, Alex? It still costs money. I, I understand. Uh, however, have you tried listening to like a narrator read it? I'm actually not sure if it was the author that read Atomic Heart, uh, Atomic Habits. Um, not really. Well, here's the thing. I, I'm plugging John Green so much because he's an influential part uh, of a lot of my inspirations and ideas. Uh, John Green actually reads his own books for Audible, like for audiobooks. So if you're watching like on a blog and you're watching John Green talk to Hank Green, they their vlogs is each week, once a week, John writes a vlog to Hank and then Hank responds back and back and forth it goes. So every week, both of them post one vlog to each other from the same channel. And when, if you ever get so used to hearing someone, right, you're establishing that emotional connection with the way they talk and whatnot. Well, John, right. He's, I would say he's a pretty prolific author. And when you go and get audiobooks, he is the one who reads his own books. So oftentimes, it's usually a narrator, a narrator that, and they're wonderful narrators. Like Stephen Fry is a personal favorite that I have most exposure to. Uh, so uh, it's interesting and really a different experience when you're used to a personality who speaks candidly publicly, right? And then suddenly you see them in their professional setting. Like John Green is probably better known as a personality on YouTube. However, once you discover his books, you realize that that's another, another extension of him. And you really get to know a different side of a person. Obviously, I don't have any other... Uh, methods the only way i could illustrate that i am a very different person is probably like try to find a old footage of me giving a seminar at the university or something because i definitely sound very different uh a thing that i like to emphasize is that when you have a specialty in teaching and communication you acquire a lot of different types of voices. The voice I am using now is incredibly different from the voice when, so what I'm going to do today, today is the half day, so it's a hump day. I only have this plan, so I'm pretty much wrapping up now. Uh, I'm going to end up vibing, vibe session with like two goobers today. It's Wednesday. We do this every, we try to do this every Wednesday. You know, just talk about what our week happened. Won't well, just me, I guess, asking them how the week's gone and all that stuff. And my speech pattern is incredibly different. Like it, it, it's incredibly different. So, uh, whenever you have an influencer, right, who naturally is incredibly well spoken, probably done a lot of different things. You can really tell when you find them in different atmospheres. If you ever meet me in person and we're at like an anime convention, oh, trust me, I am not, I'm not very similar. <laughs> you know, I'd be like jumping up and down a little bit, smiling, waving, you know, anything to get the, get the crowd going. I, I, I usually work registrations at the anime convention. So the idea is to be very, very high energetic, get people to get excited about their weekend in anime convention. Here, 
on stream when we're talking like this, I try to sound as digestible as possible. Here's a fun little fact about my own personal preferences. Sometimes people might think like, I use all these voices. What is my real voice, right? The quote unquote, the standard voice. Um, here's one deep cut that I recently discovered. So the speed that I talk in these videos, right? Uh, the, the online recorded sessions. I personally like the way my voice sound when it's uh, 1.5 speed. What does that mean? Uh, 30% faster. So I'm willing to challenge other people to uh, take the videos and then just turn it to 1.5 speed. To me, I feel that is how quick, that is closer to the pace of what I think I should be talking at. But generally speaking, I don't talk at that speed unless I'm in front of a classroom. Here, I spend a lot of time just drawing out my voice and drawing out my ideas so that it doesn't, it reduces the anxiety. Oftentimes, the faster or rapid you talk, it can be very anxious. In a professional forum, you can talk really fast and then suddenly slow down. So you talk quickly, you can choose to talk quickly through or perhaps uh, pedantic things like, oh, hey, welcome everyone. Today is a very good day. Let's get started right now, shall we? And then slow down. It's like, well, these are the important topics. One, two, three. All right. Well, let's get all the quick stuff out of the way. Last time, blah, 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 blah right? You, you just rapidly go through prefaces if everyone's already on point. And then you go. So you get more dynamics. But usually in a streaming format, um, especially on Twitch, generally speaking, in my opinion, if you relax and talk at a lower cadence, right, a slower speed, it can get people to feel a lot more comfortable. And don't necessarily rapidly change the speed of your uh, speech too rapidly. That can really throw some peeps off. I get the whole like high energy vibe stuff, but those are more like reactionary and onomatopoeias. They're not talking about like deep cuts into human psychology and whatnot. Just some stuff that I consider all the time. Anyways, thanks. Thanks for uh, sparking some interesting talk before the end of the day. Yeah, today we're going to wrap up soonish. Going to play these guys. I'm glad to hear that you're, you know, also tracking your calories. Um, one thing I have to say when tracking calories, I hope that app is giving you options. Like what I mean is uh, maybe it's being flexible in a way that it might even inspire you to pick up alternatives. Uh, generally speaking, calorie tracking can be very uh, detached, right? Um, a more consistent way. You have a 158 day streak in that, dude. Awesome. 158? Wait. So basically when you started going to the gym, because that's almost six months. Yeah, it's a little under six months. Okay. Awesome. So you did both at the same time. That's incredible. Way to, way to commit, right? Um, one thing I would say is I hope the app, um, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to successful, like, dietary app apps the most statistically consistent ones are the ones that also offer an intellectual component you know, a component that allows you to explore and give choice to what you eat and i like to believe the app you're using maybe have some form of exploratory things to keep you motivated um, and interested right 
Um, otherwise, you can always self-impose that to yourself. Like, hey, well, I have this much. These are all my options. Like, the feeling of having choice when you're trying to establish a habit is incredibly empowering. So, like, when you go to exercise, oftentimes people think of exercise as in very specific things. Instead of being encouraged to do many things first before the establishment of the routine. You don't need motivation. I'm too strong. Alex? You might not need motivation. But you can want motivation. It makes you even stronger. Don't you just want the best of both worlds? I, I understand what you mean though. I, I definitely understand what you mean. But he imagine how much stronger you are with even more motivation. And you can always pocket the motivation for another day, right? Just pocket it. Or uh, if you want motivation all the time, right? Even though you don't need it, you can always divert. I am motivation itself. <laughs> That sounds amazing. That's empowering. I, I like I like to hear that. I actually feel the energy coming from that. It's a proverbial DBZ moment, right? You just powered up right there. It's like, hold on, hold my beer. And you just like strip yourself of all the weights and motivation is just flowing outside your body. Sometimes you can be greedy. And to me, if motivation's on the table, just yoink it. You know, just yoink it. You're, you're gonna use it at some point. And I love your perspective that you don't need motivation. But try to be greedy with motivation. Steal and build all the motivation you can while you don't need it. Practice skills and stuff. Be open to practicing skills when you might not need it, right? Until you do. So that's kind of the prophylactic way. Like that's the success habits. Like I'm not practicing communication because I have to. I'm practicing communication because I want to. And when I want to do something, one day, I might need that thing, but I already have it. If you have plenty of time and you're incredibly healthy and you're doing everything's going up, right? Not becoming complacent and just being greedy as heck is the way to go. At least that's what I like to encourage people. Otherwise things can get a little boring, right? You you can start to get bored. And don't want to use the S word, but you can stagnate. When you don't feel like you want things or even need things. Sometimes uh, people convince themselves they need something that they don't really need. That can work too. Like, uh, why do people make lots and lots of money? The compulsion to need more money is what drives them, right? And they can choose sometimes to say like, nah, I just want more money. However, when it uh, elevates to a need, even though maybe not necessarily a need, it can be a very powerful force too. In moderation. Like I need PP right now. There you go. I mean, I kind of described a lot of people's uh, relationship with Os at this point. Like I need the PP. Like, well... I kind of want PP, but uh, I don't really need it. But that's why I'm not doing PP stuff. But if I feel like I need it, I'm more likely to, do, to get some PP. And we're talking about performance points here. Uh, out of context. The dangers of out of context conversation.
<laughs> yeah, I get you, Nate BB. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what do you do for New Year's, Alex? Hate to see that happen. A little hand twitches. Don't know. Probably just hang out with family. I see. Fair enough. Fair enough.
I think uh, one thing I would probably secretly challenge you to do is retain the one thing that lingers in that event and then tell me about it in a very interesting way. So it could be anything, just something that lingers on your memory. Like for example, uh, here's one that I could share about my parents. Uh, for whatever reason, right, for Christmas Day, right, just something in the past that I've observed. Uh, I don't know what it is, but, oh, well, actually, I can think of a lot of theories, but I'll, I'll tell you what actually happened and uh, give you some time to think about it. We always, uh, my father generally prepares lobster tail on holidays just just that's it that's it. it it's 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 a thing they go out of their way and they purchase lobster tail and then you have it that's that's the thing that's my father fun story yesterday i missed a stream because i was recording a video in the gym with friends and it took like three hours that sounds amazing that actually makes my, uh, that sounds like an awesome time. I can tell you now, uh, I tried this a couple of times with my, fr my best friends, right? However, we're much older now, right? And it takes a really, it's, it's very difficult to find a, 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 regular reg regularity to do things like that and we did try it a couple times and it is fantastic and now you're actually literally doing it you know on location not even like cross cross uh, cross geography and whatnot that sounds i i don't know if you're going for the word cute but to me it's incredibly endearing the word that i use would be endearing but really i'm thinking cute because uh, that's that's like an anime moment right there, Alex. Recording videos with friends and then spending a lot of time doing it. That's an anime moment. Uh, it's one of those times if you see people doing it, you you uh, I've gotten so accustomed to seeing isolation right people who are incredibly isolated especially young people who are just feeling constantly isolated and uh when i watch movies and books and all that stuff you kind of get i kind of fall into this presumption that i i don't think that stuff ever exists where like three or four friends who aren't already influencers themselves be motivated to record a video together. <laughs> I mean, if some other friends will go to another gym trying to one-up to... Oh, okay, so they're kind of influency. Alright, they basically did like a, oh, alright, Borat-style video where they just interview people. Oh, that's awesome! That's how, in my opinion, like, I want to see more of that. Like, you don't see that very often. Uh, generally, uh, in the internet's frame, right? Behind the frame, uh, what you see is an established person on a professional collaboration with someone else. And yeah, they can be buds and whatnot and through the collaboration. However, it's not... This stuff, it doesn't come up in the framework of doing things together and uh it, even now when you're telling me this it's still me through the internet right and one day i would like to hope that when i go outside and you know i visit my old college campus or something or vi visit my university and i just see four students off in the distance like i don't know recording how they 
do things on campus or something. That would be fantastic. Like, instead of seeing... I don't know. This is what I saw the last time I went out, right? And it's been a while. Mind you, it's been a while. I, I walk around. I see four people on their phones. Two, two persons apart sitting facing the glass opening right the glass window of a cafe alone i just it seems like all of them might be doing the same thing and they really fit the profile of students but generally it's just really isolated people everywhere like it's very like closed and isolated when i was growing up Obviously, this is kind of be like back in my day, or you know, the things I'm used to. I'm not saying the world has to be like that, like identically. I'm saying you could have those smartphone people be close together, sharing what they're doing on the smartphone, which is a combination of what I'm used to seeing back in my day and the new age stuff, right? Back in my day, when people go out, they're sharing things together. I mean, back in my day, phones weren't the things that captured their attention either. However, you know, the idea is like, there's a time and place to be together and socialize and build a bond. I get, I totally get the internet hustle culture that, like even in the gym, like, I'm not a gym bro, right? With that said, because it's an internet microcosm. When you go to the gym, I get it. People need to focus, they're really set on their performance and stuff. But the gym is also technically a social place. You know, a, a social place that can be potentially both social, encouraging, and productive. However, what you see on the internet is people who talk about rules, about trying to be antisocial or trying to be on task because it's about getting better. It's about the hustle. Like, I need to, it's like, dude, you just walked right in front of my video and like talk about like, oh, these kind of people are obnoxious. It's like, hey, do you even lift in the gym? Yes, I understand priorities are different. However, if I were in the gym and I see someone clearly having the worst day of their life, right? Like, it's like they don't want to be at the gym. I probably walk up to that person and say like, hey, you know what? What's up? Like, why are you so down, right? Um, and that stuff is becoming rare and rare. Generally speaking, because the vehicle of communication is no longer using using that type of advantage like if i were given someone a choice do you want to go to a public gym or have a gym of your own i would say statistically the vast majority of people would probably say a private gym and specifically a private gym that is removed from their recreational place because they want the mindset of doing work at the gym Right? But when you go to a public gym, there are so many ways to get you more motivated than you have ever been. And that's untapped. It's an untapped potential. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think people should have to go out of their way to do that if, if they are the motivators. Like Alex, I don't think you need any of these things. However, because I asked and you shared, those things are probably things that will make you even more motivated. Like, it's just, you're brimming with motivation because largely, in my opinion, you take advantage of opportunities when they are there. And going to the gym feeling insecure, uh, worried about what the world thinks about you, hiding yourself in a corner, is also not going to attract people who want to help you or want to be your friend. And yes, it sucks. I, I mean, like, when I say what I'm going to do, that's not typically 
a reflection of what actually happens, right? When you are going to a gym nowadays, you are going with a goal in mind. And if things take you away from that goal, it's a sacrifice you have to make. And typically, when someone's miserable in the corner and don't have the motivation, but they still have to self-motivate, most people are going out about their business trying to get the same thing done, right? The only time I've ever gone to a gym was at the university gym, and I deliberately go to the gym to look at what other people are doing. Because it's a resource I don't have when I'm not going to a gym. When you go online, you're looking for inspirations. You're trying to be inspired to make yourself a better person, right? To, or a better version of you to yourself. So, if I'm going to a public place, I'm, I'm gonna farm. I'm gonna farm some ideas from people. Uh, yeah, the internet isn't a, a... You're not supposed to use the internet when I went to your, Like, you're not supposed to use the internet in the sense of the way, co like, activities are done now, right? Like, you don't go around and someone would take, like, a Instagram photo of themselves or, like, type, like, oh, man, I just tanked my exam. Like, that, that stuff is still relatively new, right? So now I kind of want to see that integrate into what I feel can really help people, which is the idea like, you don't, you can stare at your phone, but you can stare at your phone with another person, right? The people close to you can be part of your internet world. It, it, it can become natural to do so, like instead of uh, becoming that person who, oh yeah, you know, I really like my exercise, so I don't usually invite my friends to come and exercise with me because I want to record something to do, like myself, right? As opposed to, hey, you know what, I have friends, maybe, maybe they want to be part of this or something, right? It, it's rarely that anymore, or I don't even think it was ever that. And it's tough. My, my friends and I, like my best friends and I, we don't do that still. Like we tried a couple times. There are actually a, a few videos that I have here and there that we tried. He does do it with his brothers though, which is fantastic. It's just, it's very difficult and it gets harder and harder as you get older. And just hearing that you're already doing it at such a young age, that, that's like the future in my opinion. It, I, I feel that it will naturally become more and more prevalent in the future where now it's about sharing those experiences while doing those experiences. Uh, it's kind of being slightly more popular. It's still not very apparent on YouTube, right? You, you can't, like, for example, when you watch an influencer, you are never certain if that person is doing all of it or there's like 50 other people working for that person. It's becoming more common now just not before like in the last three or four years there's a renaissance of that so now all the influencers right all the like tech channels and stuff they have sister channels that talk about the crew talk about all the people behind the camera the friends and colleagues that they work together you know like uncut b-rolls and whatnot are becoming more and more common now so what you're doing here in the gym is a really endearing example of it literally happening in the process and uh someone asked me yesterday i think it was yes oh no no someone asked me today in my discord if they uh asked a question about the future like do you think certain problems will have a solution the problems that we see now that are escalating or undesirable things right largely undesirable things will subside in the future absolutely just that remember that the stuff that you see now are going to be solutions in the future but you will be older and you would have outlived that solution so it was a thing about talking about like what i saw was that people interact in the public place 
However, they don't actively find engaging things to do. Now, there is always actively engaging things to do because we have smartphones, right? We have technology. It's easily, but they're so engaging that it created bubbles in the public space. So another 10 years down the line, you know, when you and your friends have found sustainable ways, those might end up becoming a social norm, but they were absent when you were younger. And that's kind of the brilliant, endearing, and fun part about humanity. Humanity goes in cycles. They respond in delays because we have to remember the older generation normalizes things through decorum, like through rules. The ones that live it are experiencing all the obstacles and trade offs. And then the ones that, once they age, a new generation takes that place, right? So, right now, what I see you doing is the beginning of what will become the norm, in my opinion, likely to become the norm in another 10 or so years, where basically it's not, oh, a particular influencer online, it's going to be a group of people, right? Things are going to be groups of people who naturally participate together. And then you have the synthesis. So then, then I'd be like an old fart then. I, then it's like I'm literally a dinosaur then. No, figuratively a dinosaur. And you know, some 60 year olds like, back in my day, I didn't even have any of those two things. And then you'll be taking my place and talking to kids about, dude, back in, back in my day, it was very difficult to get your friends to participate in the same internet culture and circles together. And then, you know, you're talking to a young generation that hopefully, in my opinion, will have a balance of all the things that I feel people in your generation are facing now, which is the isolation, a constant desire for companionship. However, all the tools you have keep you engaged in isolation that you don't naturally form the skills to have companionship. And when you go into adulthood, the companionship is for life. The context and the stuff that engages you will constantly be changing. So they won't provide the consistent feedback that to to give comfort to a human being. It's usually the companionships that you build along the way. So, uh, even careers don't last, in my opinion. Like, it, they don't, uh, companionship typically outlasts careers. So, um, yes, careers can provide for most of your life, maybe like two thirds of it. But when it comes down to competition, you have some wonderful friends, in my opinion. If you can do things like that together, there are very few things you can't do together. At least in my opinion. Obviously, life can be cruel and unlucky and stuff can change outside your control, but it sounds like you have a wonderful dynamic with your friends. Uh, my friends, my closest friends are ones in col from college and we were workaholics. We worked all the time. But the most fondest memories I have, and I can probably tell, uh, I can probably ask Eric, uh, Eric about it. He'd probably say one of the top five things we did in college was we went to the comic book store and sometimes we went on walks, like the four of us. We just went on walks because the study sessions were just, we needed a break. So we just walked around campus. And that's what you're kind of doing. Only now you're doing it with smartphones. <laughs> like you're doing it with recording devices. Which means... See, here's the thing. The advantage of what you guys are doing is that you can see it again. Like, for what it is. There, there were advantage. The trade-off for us, right, for me and my friend is we would come up with stories. We would bank off each other and try to remind ourselves what stuck out 
for us in that moment because there's no like recording device so in itself we have different behaviors like my the earlier generation has different behaviors of making those memories really special however they're not going to be the exact memories so when you're do, uh, doing your way right your generation doing your way it's a it's a fun like to me it's a really fun a realization that the times have changed and i love when times change i'm not a 70 year old like one trick pony yet so whenever i see the times changing it brings a smile to my face like it's when you're creating videos together it's like reminding me of how my friends and i used to hang out and appreciate the moment right the moment to moment things even though we spend most of our time like preparing for exams and what's going to happen in the future and whatnot it's those moments and you just listed one that is incredibly i i i'm basically imagining an episode an episode of a show and i haven't ever seen this in real life it doesn't actually happen like i i don't I, I haven't seen it happen i do miss teaching at a university because generally speaking that's where i can see these things see like three or four kids working together and then eventually like in my mind i'm thinking they're going to be friends for life and in 10 years all of them are going to be successful and form uh, like a network this is naive obviously I, I, i'm very biased when it comes to the teacher but You literally have a lot of misses on your songs. Today? This song? Are you talking about your OS experience, Deadfire? I'm sorry to hear that if it's a bad thing. Yeah, so... Alex, yeah. Thanks for sharing. That makes me really, uh... Hopeful for... <laughs> for I know you might not be a represent representative of other places and other cultures and other countries, but it's kind of fun hearing hearing uh, young peeps being enthusiastic about going to gym and then making it even more than just the gym. Uh, it gets I have worried a lot about how object objective oriented most people have become right because of the objectivity of the internet a lot of times there's no room for happenstance there's no room for creativity you go in with a goal and that's all you come out with it it can't transform into anything else so if you're going into the gym expecting to lose weight or burn calories and only that, you're only going to possibly just lose weight and burn calories. You're not going in with the potential of making a new gym friend or finding other sources of motivation, right? But now you have your friends. Unfortunately, uh, Deadfire, I can't, uh, I don't have plans to do any playing together. Uh, in Os, and I'm about to end my stream. But thanks for asking. I hope you have someone else to be able to do the anime song with you. Yeah, thanks, Alex. That really. Well, thanks, thanks, Deadfire. Uh, so. Yeah, way to end the stream on a positive note. Or like on a brimming moment. Like, honestly, if it becomes a thing. Okay, all right. Here, here's a slight, slight hot take. Okay, Alex, Borat style? Do you mean the comedy style? Or the mockumentary filming style? Because man, Borat is kind of a troll. I don't know how I feel about that. You know what? We can turn this into a digression. Hold up, hold up. Let's turn into a digression because we kind of went a little long now, right? 
Yeah, Borat. What the heck, man? What did you do? Like, did you... Tr did you guys, like, lift weights differently? Or, like... Do some weird shenanigans? Like, oh, man. I, I have seen enough Borat. I I've seen, like, the first two mockumentaries. Right? And I can only imagine what goofballs you are right now. A Borat-style gym thing. Also... Also... There's a long backstory? Okay, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Give me a tease. I like one or two... Teasers. They don't have to be, like, coherent or anything. Just... Uh... Uh... Spice it up for me. Uh, two, like, unrelated topics that is part of the backstory. That gets my, like, my gears grinding a little. About this whole Borat style video in the gym. Also, remember, Alex, that I do also encourage, make sure you don't, like, you know, upset other people. Because <laughs> as much as I enjoy the whole, like, you know be safe and also the safety of others right so because borat can be a little intense if that's where the inspiration is coming from they're big fans of another gym chain they were basically mocking the gym i go to oh i see for fun right because uh hopefully the people who run your gym isn't to myth by it. We were there from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Okay, three hours. So they were like 10 other people there. Oh, way in the dead hours in the morning. Wow, your gym is open late. Is it a, is it a 24 hour gym? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it runs around the clock, I see. Just make sure, you know. Well, it's all fun and games. I, I know I'm starting to sound like a lecture, like a, like a adult, uh, Nancy or something. But yeah, you know, as long as you don't get into like you don't cross the line with anything, right? Make sure that a joke and fun is fun. Don't be, don't don't push too much, right? Don't don't be those shenanigans and be like in interfering with stuff but you're doing it way in the late night so I doubt you're really interfering with anyone really 10 people though that's a lot of people for 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. and you must live in a place that I like to work out <laughs> dang 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. That's some motivated people. And people throughout the two hours. Oh, okay, so not at once. Okay, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That seems a little bit more reasonable. Um, low key. Low key, one of those people would be me. If I were like out and about and going to a public gym, it would be probably very, very late in the evening. Um, generally, I do uh, specific types of training in the evening time. Yeah. Do you usually go and work out late in the evening like that? Or was it just for this video? Or like this activity that you guys are going for? That sounds like so much fun. Um... Yeah, when I was growing up, it just... None of that. We couldn't even do any of that even if we wanted to. However, we still, you know, in my generation, we still had like video recording devices, right? Camcorders and stuff. Uh, the closest thing that I have, and my best friends and I have talked about it quite a few times in our, across our lives, was when we went to study abroad in New Zealand. And we had, and they have pictures. I actually have somewhere in this actual house. There's a recording device with some like mini tapes of us doing a 
a day hiking trail in the South Island of New Zealand, visiting different like uh, locations, and a lot of them deal with the landscape because Lord of the Rings, like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, was filmed at a lot of those landscapes. So somewhere in the house, I had a video recorder, like one of those classic uh, hand cams, right? That still recorded on a tape. Yeah, I know, I know. They're like mini cassette tapes, but they kind of look like mini cassette tapes. And I've recorded like four hours of me heavy breathing because I wasn't very great in shape. But basically hiking uh, a really, really long trail with my friends. That's, that's the closest thing we have. Like, we have pictures and stuff like that. There were still smartphones. Like, you know, there are still phones that can take pictures, right? <laughs> so, that's still a thing. Although, with that said, when we went to New Zealand, we couldn't bring our smart... Like, smartphone... It, doing international things with smartphones wasn't that great at the time. So, we bought burners. So, generally, we brought cameras still, like digital cameras were the standard things to use to take pictures. The times have changed so much. Uh, that was... Fifteen years ago. It's been fifteen years since my friend and I, since my... Some of my closest friends and I have done something physically together that was really big. Like a really big thing. Evenings are best for you. That's fair enough. Busy life. As I go with friends with different schedules, late evening will always work for everyone. Yeah, that's fair. Yep. That sounds about right. Um, I imagine these friends are also going to share academic tracks with you because you're at that time where I, I imagine you're starting to think about where your academic paths are going to take or your career is going to take there uh, obviously if it gets too personal you can always feel free to stop well, it's friends from high school, so not really. Oh, you, none of those high school friends just happen to coincidentally want to pursue something that's similar to you. Uh, historically, I don't have any high school friends either. One of them studies economics? I see. I see. Yeah, right now... Uh, remind me if I... If I recall, business administration, right? This this week, actually, this last 27 days have been... There are so many different types of OS players. And it's so much fun talking to different OS players and their backgrounds. However, it's also very difficult to keep all of them straight. So, yours is business, right? Yeah, business ad, okay. And the one of the friends who was fine... Who is filming is a course mate. Oh, I see. Excellent. Yeah, those are the times, man. Um, I'm a I'm really biased towards uh, education related things. Not so much high school, but everything post high school or transitioning to high school, uh, because those are my friends for life. Like I have friends from that post age that yeah it's it's a fantastic time to find find a companionship for a lifetime right and having one or two is irreplaceable they are absolutely irreplaceable and you're at the time of your life in my opinion as a golden opportunity to establish permanent companionship and it's fun hearing how you're doing it uh, generally speaking I met my college friends who are now my best friends right some of my 
long-standing friends. Actually, if you want, it's here's how the times change. If you want to see them, if you want to see what they're like, uh, they actually have a channel that they do something that they've been doing, like they have a hobby that they've been doing almost their entire lives. And they were way, way ahead of me when it came to dedicating their life to a hobby. And that's miniatures, 40k miniatures. Uh, they're, the reason why I always say they, it's not, it's because the pronoun is apt. They are triplets. My, so my long-standing friends, they are triplets. They are identical triplets. So they all went to the same college, and I went to the same college, and we became best friends. Yeah. And they really like 40k, so... Friends for life. And also, uh... The way... Uh, we form friendships was through academics. Let's play Os. Uh, sorry, I'm, uh, at... Sorry, Santos. Uh, right now I'm pretty much at the end of my session. Uh, and also, just as a disclaimer, I don't usually play, uh, Os Multi. Play with me and you, please. I am alone online. Me against the only Brazilian songs? Sorry. Uh, unfortunately I can't... I don't really do that, and I don't plan on doing it. My bad. Uh, I hope you find other... I, I imagine you have other Brazilian friends, right? Uh, we're at the end, so I can't really help you there. Sorry, friend, though. Come to Brazil? <sighs> I can't even get out of the house, Alex. <laughs> maybe in... Maybe when I'm like... 60, I'll have the urge to become a globetrotter or something. I, I think uh, there's probably a greater likelihood to meet in a virtual... Oh, it's a meme? Brazilian people usually type that? Oh, I see. Thanks for informing me. As in, like, Brazilian people online or Brazilian OS players? You accept? Do it cool on camera so I can understand? I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. And unfortunately, I don't do that. It's just an oh, gaming online meme, I see. Well, unfortunately, I can't do that for you. No, no, it's I, I can't do that. Unfortunately, I will have to uh, respectfully decline. Decline. Although there are plenty of other O's players on both YouTube and Twitch that can help you with that. I'm sure some of them would love your company, Santos. Unfortunately, I cannot offer them. It's not one of my... It's not one of my services. Thanks for asking, though. I'll have to keep up on that, Alex. I had no idea that was a meme. Huh. And... And it's just... Brazil? Like, nowhere else? Huh. I wonder why that's the case. I'm so fascinated by this gaming meme now. <laughs> I'm so fascinated. Like, why that? Alright, I'm gonna go in a deep rabbit hole. I'm pro- uh, uh, Just to give you an uh, idea of what I'm doing now is... Uh, this is a half day. So Wednesdays are half days. I do this and not an, a second activity. And then uh, I go and vibe with two goobers that I met on Twitch. And I'm gonna vibe with them about random things, how their week is doing, right? Talk about things, uh, you know, upkeep stuff. Um, and maybe I'll figure out, know your memes. Okay, hold up. Take a look at this.
Oh. I see. 2009. Interesting. Oh, dang. Justin Bieber? And then Tumblr? Oh, man. This goes way back. This isn't, this isn't just a meme. This goes back way back. This is over 25 years old. Man, I was living under a rock, I guess. Even BuzzFeed and the Olympics? What the? Oh. I, I officially feel uncultured. <laughs> it's so old, Alex. Uh, no, I, I'm okay. Alright, alright, folks. It's a, it's been a wonderful day. I'll, uh, I don't know what this is going to go under. Maybe, maybe for once, the digression video is just going to be random chit chat, right? <laughs> random chit chat. I haven't done this in a long while. Alex, keep having wonderful times with your friend. Good luck. Keep going with your fitness journey, right? And, uh, definitely bring back more and more funny stories. I think if you find it a fun challenge, definitely work up a storytelling thing for me. Like, uh, even if it's like a, a sprinkle of imagination, right? Like, throw in some fun imagination, like some uh, expressive words and whatnot, because I, I love hearing the day-to-day -day of other people. If you don't think it's exciting, well, it can at least be exciting to someone who's not doing it. I can't live your life, right? Like, I can't live like your life anymore. Like, I don't go through phases that you do. I couldn't even do it when I was younger because the tools weren't there. So, it's incredibly interesting to me. I'm too old now. Like, I'm just out of time. Right? I'm, not, like, not of the time anymore. So, it's awesome that you're willing to share these things. And I'm always looking forward to the next thing. So again, really appreciate the company and discussion. Still gonna do this for the next four days at least. Alright. Eight, nine, ten, yeah. Four days. Alright man, if I don't see you though, happy holidays. You know, happy new year. I'll catch you next time, alright? Alright folks. We had a little bit of a wrap-up chit-chat. Uh, today went pretty smoothly. It looks like we're just going to go up to 163 and then drop back down, right? 163 seems like the place where we have some uh, yipping. There's a lot of yipping at 163, like right here. Um, Tomorrow, I'm going to try to slow down the climb and see if we can get to 165 or 170 comfortably without straining. Then go back down. But it was pretty good. Had some great conversations. As always, thanks for chilling, vibing, chatting. Always feel free to share, discuss, comment in any way possible, right? Comments, DMs, what have you. I always have something to say. At least I try. Alright, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Keep on learning, guys. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye now.